Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're looking at the PC Cooler RC600-67. It's a small form factor CPU cooler and we're going to see how it performs and see if it can actually beat Noctua or Thermal Rights. Okay then, so this is the RC600-67. It's a high pro, uh, performance CPU cooler. Now this is a downdraft type cooler. So let's get the box open, shall we? Now, of late, I've been looking at a lot of coolers, but what I will say is downdraft coolers, I really, ooh, I really do prefer downdraft coolers because I do like the overall aesthetics of it. Now, so in terms of the overall accessories, this is what it comes with. There we go. So it comes with a thermal paste, which is not a lot, but... Yeah, not a lot. So it supports AM4, AM5, Intel. It's got the Intel backplate, and then it's got a manual by here then that tells you how, and it shows you how to install the cooler. So let's take a look at this cooler because I've been looking at it now for a while in the box, and I've been wanting to look at at it. Ooh, okay, it's, it's rather light. It has a 120 mil fan, but it's very, very slim as you can see. And it does have six heat pipes. Wow, look at this. Look at those. I like that. There's the base plate, but there I wouldn't exactly say that's the size of LJ1700, but what I will say is it will cover the overall die inside it will cover that because it is big enough now it is a fan obviously that's got clips this is a very small thin 120 fan it's got a four pin pwm which is very good and it looks like it's something similar to knock to the way they install it through this so that means you'd have to take the this off to get the fan on so let's get this on the test bench and see how it performs against the coolers from thermal right and and knock to her, shall we? Okay, so this is the PC Cooler RC667. This is a 50% fan speed, approximately a foot away. I'm going to do up close. And then further away. So a 50% can barely hear it. Now 100%. I'm going to do it up close and then pull the mic from it. So as you can hear, 100% is definitely loud. Okay, so when it comes to the overall testing, I do my normal run of benchmarks, blender classroom blender pavilion cinebench r23 and 3d mark cpu test because it hits the cpu different during the test so now something i want to really say at the beginning of each test it does start at 188 watts that's with a 5900x but when the overall test is actually going it does drop to 160 watts no thermal throttling but the clock speeds do go from 4.9 all the way down to 4.0. So that's a 900 megahertz loss due to the fact that it loses a lot of wattage. So for Cinebench R23, the idle is a 32 with a max of 90. And all the overall testing when it comes to the overall cores were in the 80s to the late uh, high 90s. And they were all red. Blender Pavilion, idles 32 with a max of 91. Like again, all the overall temperature readings were all red. Blender Classroom, the idles 32 with a max of 91. Exactly the same thing again. 91, it was all red. 
three marks in per test. The idols are 32 with a max of 82. And that was the only test that it didn't actually show any red. Okay, and so what did you think? Now, look, all I'm going to say is, to be honest, I expected a bit more. Due to the fact that I'm used to testing Noctua as well as thermal ray coolers. And usually the thermal ray coolers are the ones that usually surprise me. Because despite what anyone says about thermal ray, their coolers are the best on the market for the price to value, price to performance. And I expected a bit more, but... I have to keep myself unbiased because at the end of the day, this is a cooler for a certain CPU, which is basically a under 100 watt CPU, which me putting on a 5900X, of course, I should have expected it would fail. But that's the whole point of testing it is to see where the breaking point is. Now, while during the Cinebench R23 run, it got within a minute of testing and then it instantly hit the hard limit of the CPU, which is 90 Celsius. Now, yes, at that present moment, it did lose watts, and it also did lose CPU frequency. It went from a 4.9 down to a 4.0. That's a 900 megahertz hit to performance, and that does, and that will affect gaming. So, if you're looking for a small form factor cooler that you're planning to put on something that does more than 100 watts then I honestly don't buy this one buy something that's rated for a higher tdp now the reason why i like small form factors is because a lot of the overall coolers i've tested from joy shark uh be quiet knock to a thermal take a uh, thermal right they've done very well actually for pc cooler but i'm going to be completely honest with you you have got any CPU that does draw more than 100 watts, then don't look at this one, please. Make sure you look for something that's within your CPU's TDP range. But other than that, it's not a bad cooler for what it's meant for. If you've got a 65 watt CPU, then this will do it no problems. So there you go. Now, I'd like to say a big thank you to PC Cooler for sending out all these products for me to review and i'm really excited for what's coming next now i've had my hard drives for my nas i've got mvmes coming from a pacer i've also got that thermal master thermal camera that i will be releasing a video this week coming because that is something i really truly want to show you guys so what i'm planning on doing is testing a cooler while i record so you guys can see how the heat transfers between a cooler so yeah, make sure you subscribe because that's going to be a very interesting video. I'm really excited to start using that thermal camera because I think it genuinely will help me and you guys to know where the overall, well, the best point of a cooler is with showing you the overall thermal output. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. And as always, this is Rich Welsh Tech. Good. Bye.